Uh, why don't we start with the one that actually already has an IP address? All right, the, the one that already has the IP address, my Cali machine, that this thing currently has a 172.20.0.2. So this one already has an IP address. Where did it get it from? And the answer is, well, it kind of depends. Right? It depends on what service do you currently have controlling and managing your networking for this particular distribution. And a lot of these distributions that have GUIs, they might have some type of GUI tool in the top that would allow you to go and manage your network connections. I'm not saying that's a bad way necessarily to learn how to do things, but I'm definitely going to emphasize be proficient at the command line and learn what are the command uh, line driven ways that we might be able to interact with things. So I'll show one way on how to do this on the Kali machine. I'll show one way on how to do it on the Ubuntu. And finally, I'll show one way on how to do this on the scent machine. And hopefully seeing a variety of ways all that are command driven, you'll be able to figure out based on which distribution you're on, what's the appropriate way to do it. And understand there's more than one way to do it. All right. So let's see how we could do this with the uh, with the, with the Cali machine. And, and we'll try to go find those details right now as to how is how is this created. OK. Um, and so the, the important configuration file that we want to pay attention to specifically for our Cali machine right now is in ETC. Right. A lot of our files are in ETC. So let's just cat it out. Let's just take a look at it in ETC. So we're going to cat out a file that's slash etc slash network slash interfaces interfaces plural i see a lot of people manually type this out and they type interface and then they get an empty file that's the wrong file it's got to be the interfaces file there should already be information in this file okay so if you have the net tools package installed on your computer you will have the slash etc slash network slash interfaces file and it might look something like this many times when you get it from scratch all that it has is kind of this top information. It has a little description, and then it has here's where we've configured the LO, the loopback interface. And the information towards the bottom of this, that's something that I manually added in. I added that into this virtual machine before you before you got it, before uh, we even started. And that's why this one came with an IP address. All right. And so we can kind of see what a minimal configuration looks like in the slash etc slash network slash interfaces file there's an example of one of the minimal configurations all right and we'll talk we'll kind of talk through this here in just a moment now one of the reasons why i configured this particular ip address to start was specifically for the mini hack specifically for the mini hack i wanted everyone who's playing the game here to be able to open up a web browser and be able to visit the scoreboard server that's already running and that of course was running at 172.20.0.1 and that's not a virtual machine that we currently see that's one that's hiding behind the scenes and if we log in here at this particular virtual machine uh, in, into the scoring system like what the mini hack wanted us to do it would allow us to see okay what our challenge is right we're given a challenge here as the mini hack and so what i'd like to kind of do here is just start sort of start to follow this right i i, I could go and assign whatever ip addresses i wanted but at least this kind of gives us a target to chase and learn a little bit about how the mini hack is done and and uh, kind of get some practice with this so one of the things the mini hack gives you every single time you clone out your machines you create new machines is you're going to have a different team number and it's very common that on the day of the event you're going to get the same thing you're going to get assigned to team number you don't know what that number is until the day of the event and so following this topology and substituting in your team number that's going to be a critical skill you got to be able to follow the topology you got to be able to follow the picture and configure your machines accordingly so if this machine is supposed to exist in the picture here it's supposed to exist at 172.20 my team number dot 100 right now my team number is dot 118 and well what 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 is my current ip address what where is this thing currently configured and when we take a look it's like well it's currently configured to be 172.20 dot well 0 0.2 okay so it's not really configured to be the right interface and of course that, that's what we're going to learn to change here let's ch learn how could i go through and change this particular uh, configuration so then it actually kind of matches the picture and i'm i'm following the topology and uh, uh setting things up accordingly so all right so let's use a uh, let's use our commands to be able to go and modify this file now and of course this this is a a, a file that will change our networking configuration it's an important file so we're going to have to use sudo and you could use your favorite text editor either nano or vi doesn't really matter so i'll do a sudo nano slash etc slash network slash interfaces again i'm using tab to auto complete this make sure i don't have any typos i'll confirm my password here of password and now i'm into the file
Okay, and so I'll just kind of wipe everything away here. I know there was information already added, but I'll add it right back in here manually now, just so we can emphasize what are the things that would have been done if I was dealing with this file from scratch. Now, one of the lines you oftentimes put when you're dealing with an interfaces file is an auto and then the name of the interface. Auto and then in this case, ETH0. That's why it's so critical to know what is the name of the interface you're configuring. If we were doing something like this on Ubuntu, we'd have to pay attention and say, well, over there it's the ENS18 interface, not the ETH0 interface. So you got to name an interface that actually exists. And also it's ETH0, not ETH0. Lots of people toss in an O, an or a lowercase O, or an uppercase. That, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's ETH and then a number. And they go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So auto ETH 0. And what this says is when this service restarts, either when you restart the computer or when you restart the service, this particular interface will also start automatically. All right, so it's an important line to put in there if you want this particular interface to come online automatically. And oftentimes you do, like you're configuring the networking. I want this thing to automatically work and automatically turn on when I turn on my computer. So sure, that's an important line to toss in there. Now we can kind of follow the structure of what's, what's sort of above this. And, we, and what we have to do is sort of name what kind of interface are we creating. All right, and so we kind of have some options. I can say iFace and then the name of the interface. So I'm declaring a setting for my ETH0 interface. I'm creating an iNet address, an internet address, or an IP address. And then finally, we have a couple options. Now we can see above, this is how we would declare our loopback address. And I'm not interested in making a loopback address. I want to make an address that could actually go out on the network. Now you have kind of two options here. One would be to say, well, I'm going to use DHCP. Right? DHCP would be the thing that automatically assigns IP addresses to you. Well, in this particular setup, there is no DHCP server. There's nothing that's going to automatically give me an IP address, at least in this mini hack. Certainly in other challenges, a DHCP server might be available and you might even have to use it. It might be required that you use it. All right, so learning how to use a DHCP server certainly would be important. This would be the end. That would be it. You would simply put the, these changes in this file, you would save the file, and then you'd be done with it. Now, for a challenge like this, though, in many challenges, you have to follow the topology. It's your job to configure every IP address exactly the way it needs to be, and nothing's getting assigned automatically. And you got to follow the rules. If you don't follow the rules, you're not going to get points, it's not going to work, etc. All right. And so if we wanted to follow the rules here and configure this ourselves, the other option is that we do a static configuration where we manually come in here and type the information. So that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to do a static configuration to our ETH0 interface. Now, a lot of times when you want to start entering details, you can just put them here on the very next line. We're about to declare a bunch of details about our ETH0 uh, adapter. But many times for like visual purposes, we'll do a tab. We'll tab in the information, makes it a little bit easier to read, especially if you had multiple interfaces, like if you had an ETH0 and an ETH1 and an ETH2. That's why we put some of the spacing here in this configuration file. But, the, but technically, the tab in this case is not actually necessary. So nevertheless, I want to emphasize what is the minimum configuration necessary to get this working. And this is a really important detail when, when we think back to that like tip number one. What does the service do? Like, how does networking work? All right, and this is something where if you go online and start looking for things online, you'll find a lot of websites that will tell you, put in this detail and put in this detail and put in this detail and put in this detail. And you just sort of say, okay, I'm, I'm putting them all in. It's like, well, is it relevant? Do you need every detail? Do you understand networking enough to know which ones are necessary and which ones are like, well, if I was in that situation, I would need that detail, but actually right now I don't. All right, those, those are some critical questions to kind of ask. So I'm gonna show like a bare minimum configuration and then you can add in other details as it becomes required by your network. All right, so let's start with some of the bare minimum. The bare minimum, of course, is I would have to declare what is the address that I'd like this particular interface to use. And let's go ahead and follow the picture. So if you're doing this as well in the mini hack environment, I'm sure you have a different number than me. You don't have 118, or unless of course you've got randomly generated 118 as well, but you probably have a different number. So if I wanted to follow this, I could say, well, I'm gonna use 172.20.118.100. All right, let's see if I can configure my IP address to be that. So I'll say 
0.20.118.100. I believe that's what it just said. All right, and so that's one critical piece of information when I'm using the interfaces file. Another critical piece of information is to be able to declare the subnet mask. All right, so what is your net mask that's going to uh, go uh, along with your IP address? All right, and so in this particular diagram, they show you that they want you to use for this particular device a slash 16 net mask. Now, again, we're kind of back to the whole, do you know a little bit about networking or not? Do you know what slash 16 actually translates to, what it means? So slash six, excuse me, slash 16, of course, what that represents is saying, I want a net mask of 255.255.0.0. All right, so this is not necessarily the most common net mask, but it certainly is common enough that you might encounter something like this, 255.255.0.0. All right, and also just as a quick networking refresher, what does that actually mean? What, what does that tell you about this configuration? What's the purpose of the net mask? And the quick answer is, wherever there was a 255 in the net mask, the corresponding numbers in the IP address are network numbers. In other words, wherever there was a 255, the first two numbers were 255 in the net mask. That means the first two numbers in the IP address are for the network. So that means I'm connecting right now to the 172.20 network. That's the network I'm connecting to. Wherever there was a zero in the mask, the corresponding numbers in the address refer to your device. So I am configuring myself to be device number 118.100. All right, I actually have two numbers that represent my device right now. My, this Cali computer is being represented as 118.100. And that's what my, 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 net, or my host information is going to be. So it's really critical to understand from a theory perspective that part of your IP address is the network, part of your IP address is, is the device itself, the host, and your net mask tells you which part. So I'm telling my computer right now, let's connect to the 172.20 network, and we're doing that to be consistent with the diagram. If I connect to the 172.20 network, I will be able to communicate with other devices that are also 172.20 which will kind of be like the outside of the router and which will be the scoring server that I'm talking to right now. But because I'm configuring myself to be connected to this part of the network, I will not be able to directly communicate with these other parts of the network, things that are not configured to be 172.20. So again, basic networking. All right, nevertheless, let, let's go ahead and click the buttons. This is the bare minimum configuration that you need to bring an IP address online. If you wanted to start putting in other things like a gateway or like a DNS server or other information like that, you can but it's not required and in this diagram i don't have those things anyways so i've seen a lot of people go in and put in like their their dns their name server as 8.8.8.8 .8 and it's like well that that's that's a server that's for google out on the internet and you don't have access to the internet right now so why are you referencing a computer that's out on the internet that's not even connected to your network and the answer was uh well the website told me to so i just copied the website it's like well let, let's let's try to get a little better than that so let's go ahead and do this all right cool so I'll save these changes. I'll do a control X, Y, enter. Yes, there are other details I certainly could put in, but I'm kind of doing the bare minimum here. And uh, let, let's go ahead and just uh, try uh, uh, try applying the service. Because as we see, if I do an IPA, it's like, well, I still have the old IP address. This has not actually changed the new IP address yet because I haven't restarted the service. Okay. Now, how you restart a service very much depends on the service itself. There certainly is a very useful command to learn about, though, and that's the systemctl command. Systemctl. Systemctl has a lot of options that allow you to do things like start, stop, restart, enable, disable, status, you know, things like that that allow you to check on your services. And so this is the way that we would use this. And oftentimes this does require sudo. And if you want to restart a service, you need to be a root level user. So I could say something like sudo systemctl. You then say, what is it I want to do? It's like, well, I want to do a restart. And what is it that you're restarting? You now need to learn the name of the service. And in the Kali computer, when you're using this slash etc slash networking slash interfaces file, the name of the service is called networking. Okay, so system sudo system CTL restart networking. That's what I'm going to give a try here. And let's see if it worked. If I do an IPA, does it still, did, it, did, did my changes take effect? It looks like it. 172.20.118.100. Can I still reach the scoreboard? 
right? If I try refreshing this page, am I still there? Yeah, it still worked, right? If I try opening it in a new tab, it's like, yeah, the scoreboard does still work. It does still load. So even though I was already connected to the network, I was at 172.20.0.2, that didn't really follow the diagram. So now I've been able to change the IP address, stay on the same network, and so I can still talk to the scoring server, okay? Uh, let's, let's see another way to do this. Let's see another way you can go about applying an IP address. And of course, this is one way that we can do it that works on our Kali machine. Uh